Let's move on to uh, our final uh, little section of, of talking about these candidates. Uh, Amy Klobuchar, who got third in New Hampshire, and everybody was like, this is a headline. Third place winner? Oh, boy. Everybody get on the news dials and write your stories about number three. Uh, there have been reports coming out about Amy Klobuchar's DA record uh, in Hennepin County in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And uh, it's pretty abysmal. It's, she's, she's, in my opinion, and I, I think you'll probably have the same opinion after we get through this part. Uh, I think she's just as bad as Kamala Harris when it comes to criminal justice reform. So, the story is about uh, uh, Mine Burrell. I think I'm pronouncing that name. If I'm if I'm mispronouncing that name, I, I apologize. Uh, I don't mean to mispronounce his name, but uh, Mine Burrell, I believe, is the the, the kid's name. Uh, who was a minor? He was 16, and he got a life sentence. He's been in prison for the last 18 years. Uh, and uh, there's a lot of evidence that Klobuchar mishandled the case. Um, there was a lot of wrongful evidence. There was a lot of a uh, lot of ways that uh, the the uh, her 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 departments did not do a good job of actually investigating uh, the case and uh, getting the right person behind bars. And what Burrell is being accused of is is. Uh, killing an 11 year old girl uh, which is horrible it's a horrible fucking thing to happen but you shouldn't put an innocent person in prison and uh, and and Burrell is is consistently claimed that he's innocent um, and this is a point of pride for Klobuchar she she considers this like a point of pride that she was able to get this criminal off the streets and get a 16 year old a life fucking sentence a life sentence for a 16-year-old and this is a point of pride for this person? That should not be a point of pride for you. You should not you you should have looked at a way to help that 16-year-old kid figure out how to get his life straight. But you didn't. You just basically criminalized a black kid. And you're proud of it. That's so gross and so crazy to me. Uh, one of the ladies from The View, and actually I don't watch The View, I, I, and I'm not particularly familiar with all of them. Uh, Sonny Huston, I guess that's, sorry, Sonny Houston, Sonny Houston, that lady. I'm, again, if I'm mispronouncing her name, sorry. Uh, I'm not familiar, I'm not an avid watcher of your program. I've watched your program a couple of, in a couple of clips. I've watched a few different interviews. Uh, and most of them have been infuriating, uh, and uh, so I don't I don't particularly watch it very often. But uh, so she was on the View, Amy Klobuchar, and Sunny, this woman, uh, she's a, she's she's one of the, uh, the the black women on the show, basically said you mishandled that case. It was misrepresented. It seems like an innocent person is in, is in prison. Uh, it seems very evident of that, where you have detectives from the from from Klobuchar's DA department uh, that were offering five hundred dollars to people that were just going to give them whatever information they had, and they didn't corroborate with anybody. They didn't check if the information was right. They they basically were like, "We'll give you money if you just say stuff about this person." so that we can claim evidence and, uh, you know, witness evidence or whatever and make sure that this kid stays in prison. So, Klobuchar... Oh, and none of the surveillance tapes or anything were checked. Like, her department was given a bunch of surveillance tapes that would have proven this kid's innocence, and they, like, didn't do anything about it. And Klobuchar says, well, we're calling for a review of the evidence. And she's apparently has, has been working with the Innocence Project to get, uh, get people that were wrongfully accused out of prison. Well, this kid was wrongfully accused, and he needs to be out of prison. And 
Sonny even points it out. She's like, you're a senator. You're a powerful person. You can fucking do something about that right goddamn now. And, you know, she did. She still hasn't. He's still in prison. Uh, so, um, the, the Racial Justice Center, uh, talked about this, and they interrogated Burrell at age 16 for eight hours, did not let to see, let him see his mom. I, I think it was reported that he called out for his mom, like, 13 times, who was on the other side of the door, and they just, like, wouldn't let him see his mom and kept him in for fucking eight hours. Like, who fucking does this? Who does this? And he maintained his innocence from the start. Like, he kept saying, like, I didn't do this. I didn't do this. You have the wrong guy. Uh, Klobuchar pretty much exploited his case for political gains. You know, kind of using that as the tough on crime. I'm tough on crime. Because I put an innocent black kid in prison. Tough on crime. Are you black? Are you innocent? Were you vaguely, somehow, kind of, sort of, maybe not really around a crime that might have been kind of, sort of, maybe committed? Well, then you belong in prison, fella, because we are tough on crime. Amy Klobuchar, crime tougher. You ain't tough on crime. You're tough on fucking moving up the ladder of the political machine. You don't give a shit. I was waiting for her to just come out and be like, and truant children's mothers need to be executed. (laughs) Tough on crime. (laughs) Like, that's... That's not tough on anything. That's tough on innocent people. Cool. So, you're an authoritarian. Great. Here's the fucking... Here's the... Here's the... The the, the coup de grace of uh, Amy Klobuchar in this situation. Burrell's mom passes away, uh, and um, he was not allowed to attend the funeral, which is like a thing that that they do, right? Like if if somebody passes away and you're in prison, they will give you a a release for a day or something to go pay your respects and have closure. That's something that that prisons have known to do. And Klobuchar would not let this kid go because she said that he was still a danger to society. A threat to public safety is what she said. This innocent kid that just wants to say goodbye to his mom is a threat to public society. No, you know what? You're a fucking threat to citizens that want to live their fucking lives. You're a threat to anybody that actually wants to be an, an actual fucking investigator that actually wants to do criminal justice. That's what Amy Klobuchar is a threat to. And you want to be fucking president. And you want the black vote. On top of this, somebody confessed to the crime. Somebody came out and and finally confessed to the crime and Burrell is still in prison. Still in prison. So they keep giving him a plea deal, but he has to plead guilty and he he stays principled and says, I'm not pleading guilty to a crime that I didn't commit because here's the thing. Now now you're a convicted murderer. That's essentially what you do to him. And you ruin his life even further. He serves some time in prison. He comes back out. And he can't get a job. Yeah, I, I don't think he can vote in Minnesota. Not that he would want to fucking vote for Amy Klobuchar. I can tell you that much. You, you make... So, so he gets out of prison. And his life is even tougher now. Because he pleaded guilty, and, and now in the eyes of society, because law enforcement has said so, because the judicial system has said so, he's a murderer for a crime that he didn't fucking commit. And and you're just kind of fine with that? Like, Amy Klobuchar is just kind of fucking fine with that?
this is this is fucking psychopathy. You kept an innocent kid in prison to move up the political ladder. You're not a stable individual. The Racial Justice Center, uh, the, the woman on Democracy Now! that was talking about this, was basically like, hey, Klobuchar is a predatory uh, prosecutor. And yeah, she kind of is. She doesn't really do the job. And when, and when evidence is pointed out where, where she is proven wrong, she doesn't accept it. She just kind of dismisses it. And keeps, keeps somebody in prison that doesn't fucking need to be in there. Fuck that bitch. She's not doing much to set Myron Burrell free. Reviewing the evidence. There is somebody that fucking confessed. Investigate that. Why would you not investigate that? Like, why wouldn't that be the first thing you do in terms of, like, reviewing evidence? She's also very buddy-buddy with the police departments in in Hennepin County in Minneapolis. Uh, And uh, she didn't hold any of them accountable for any of the killings that they did. Because police brutality and and police killings of innocent innocent people, uh, particularly innocent black people, is is an epidemic across this country. And uh, she basically fucking did anything. And the black community in in Hennepin County uh, called her out for consistently... Uh, having no accountability for these people. And she, like, didn't say anything. She just kept her fucking mouth shut supporting the cops that killed these people. And and then, oh, and then she ignores a letter from a mom about her kid that was gunned down by a cop. And she fucking didn't do anything about that. A mother came to you about her deceased child and you turned your back to it and you want to sit there and be like I'm the centrist with these with that leans progressive and I'm the most logical candidate nah you ain't this kind of coldness though this kind of like um, I need to be at the top of everything kind of thing it makes sense for her character and some people and it's so weird to me but some people actually find this sort of stuff very like attractive in a leader like they want somebody that's like shrewd and doesn't give a shit and isn't compassionate or empathetic but feigns compassion and empathy to kind of be like this is what compassion this is how compassionate people act these are the words that compassionate people say like that's what she does because she fucking has a horrific track record with how she treats her staff. So all of this like lines up with who she is as as a person in reality, right? The fucking the 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 show she puts on at the debates and when she does all this press where she seems like Miss Nicey Nice from fucking Minneapolis, which don't get me wrong, fucking Minneapolis people are super fucking nice. I've met a bunch of Minneapolis people, and guess what? None of them are as big of assholes as Amy Klobuchar. Amy Klobuchar seems to be this rare breed of this power-hungry fucking snake in the grass that will turn her back on you if she can climb up the ladder, that will stomp on your fucking throat and then blame you for, for having your throat get in her way. That's the kind of person that she is. She treated her staff like shit, right? Like, there's a bunch of stories about, like, how she yelled at her staff and she said that they weren't good enough. Like, she, she like, went crazy and, uh, like, yelled at a staffer uh, for, like, an, a food order and, and threw, like, a, a bowl of salad or some shit at them and, like, ate, ate a salad with a comb. And then there's a bunch of people that are like, that's a leader right there. No, that's a mentally unstable person that needs hours and hours of therapy and should not be around people or leadership. She made she made a bunch of her staffers go home and wash her fucking dishes, which goes against 
the Senate Ethics Committee, by the way. Like, the Congressional Ethics Committee says that you can't have your staffers do personal errands for you. That's real fucking close to you just being like, I'm paying you. Go clean my house now. And it's like, oh, are we just kind of... This seems like we're kind of warping the slavery thing a little bit. Maybe we fucking shouldn't do that, Amy. Maybe we fucking shouldn't do that. She handed out tarty... She handed out tarty slips. Because, like, some of her employees uh, came in late and she would go in and put out tardy slips on every empty desk right and then they all thought it was a joke but she was being very serious and like got real fucking pissed when they thought it was a joke it was like look I was never the fucking model employee when I had an office job right but I would always tell my employers to be like yo I'm gonna show up late uh, cause I live in the burbs and this job is in the city and that's a 45 minute drive every morning so I'm gonna show up late but I'll stay late I'll stay late. Um, and, that, and that's what I would do. And uh, like in one of my jobs, my art director was like super fucking understanding of that where she was like, yeah, if you show up at 930, stay till 530. And that and then I would. And she would be like, she would be very understanding. And she didn't fucking put a tardy slip down and then like took herself way too goddamn seriously. That's the other problem. Klobuchar takes herself way too goddamn seriously in the worst possible way. I would be curious to know how fucking religious her upbringing was because this is some like weird righteous indignation crap. But she claims that she has really high standards for herself and her, and her staff. Really? Where were those high standards when you put an innocent black kid in prison for life? Where was it when you were actually missing doing real investigations? on the death of a fucking 11 year old girl. Where the fuck were those standards? All of this fits the bill for somebody that like will do anything to get ahead, right? Which kind of makes her like a perfect little template for what the DNC wants because I think they're that that is Amy Klobuchar might be the last kind of weapon to use against Bernie Sanders uh, if all else fails because they're because the DNC is currently flailing. They tried to use Elizabeth Warren. They pumped a lot of effort into Elizabeth Warren. Um, that didn't work. Elizabeth Warren came out and put out this fucking huge lie about Bernie. It didn't work. Uh, so they called in Hillary Clinton and that didn't work he still won Iowa he still won New Hampshire he might win South Carolina and Nevada he's on the track for it so Mayor Pete came into the play and they tried to derail it using Mayor Pete but that doesn't seem like it's working either Joe Biden is, has, has, has not been he, he as a person is not working. Like, Joe Biden's brain is melting in his fucking head, and we're just watching that happen. Uh, and, and like, every debate is just, is just like, oh, we're watching Joe uh, have a seizure in front of our face, and uh, we're just fine with it, and CNN gets to make a shit ton of money off of it. So... And then now they're trying with Bloomberg, right? But Bloomberg's getting eviscerated by everybody that's like, hey, you just can't fucking buy your way into it and say that you're running a campaign for your fucking self. You selfish, egotistical, Trump wannabe fuck. I really don't like Bloomberg. I don't know if you can tell. Uh, but uh, Klobuchar, I think, is sort of their, their Hail Mary because she will do anything to get ahead. And that's proof. It's proof in how she treated this kid. It's proof in how she treats her staff. It's proof in the way that she that, that she's carried herself. And she's she's just as dangerous as Mayor Pete. Because if Mayor Pete doesn't work out for the establishment, for the deep state, the authoritarian regime of imperialism that America keeps pushing on the world. 
if all those people that want that to happen uh, through Mayor Pete doesn't really work out that way, then they'll turn to Amy. And if Amy wants to, Amy Klobuchar wants to be at the top of everything, if she wants to succeed because she has, I, I think Amy has, has a very visceral need to, to be in control and to be uh, in power. Um, and she will pretend to be Miss Nicey Nice Minnesota, but she's, but she's a vicious human being staff reports and the way that she has treated the black community in Minneapolis is pretty evident of that. And I think I think we all should keep an eye out for Amy Klobuchar. Hey, thank you for tuning into that uh, uh, that video. I hope you liked it. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, uh, please hit that like button. Please subscribe and, uh, you know, make sure you're uh, getting updates on when I release videos. I release videos every single week. Uh, I have uh, multiple different types of podcasts. Uh, the video you just watched is called Road Reflections. Uh, it's a kind of looser uh, video series that I do where I talk about current events and, uh, and some individual news stories and ideas and topics that I don't think get discussed in the mainstream. Uh, if you want a more written, concise uh, focused version of it. Uh, I, I do a, a video series called Forkful of Noodles, uh, where I talk about big ideas in, uh, in, in longer formats, uh, and usually that involves multiple parts. Um, and I have an interview podcast called Taboo Table Talk, where I talk to comedians, musicians, activists, journalists, uh, politicians, anybody of interest, uh, any conversation that you, you're not going to hear on the mainstream. You're not going to see them on, on uh, any of the corporate news outlets. They are, they are talking about the real deep shit. Uh, and part of that is also the dispatch, which is another current events, uh, like more timely current events uh, thing. So that's what happens on this channel. So if you enjoyed that, make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you like the page. Make sure you get the notifications for all these, uh, all of the content that I put out. Uh, but if you enjoy any of the content that I put out, if you enjoy the videos that I'm, I'm putting up, the, the subject matter that we're talking about, there's a very good chance that you'll enjoy my live stand-up comedy, and I'm currently on tour. I am touring through the Deep South and the Midwest. Uh, so if you are in Denton, Texas, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, Dallas, Texas, Austin, Texas, Houston, Texas, New Orleans, Louisiana, uh, Biloxi, Mississippi, Memphis, Tennessee, St. Louis, Missouri. I am coming to your cities in uh, the next two weeks. So go to my website, ramennoodlescomedy.com. That's R-A-M-A-N, noodlescomedy.com. Grab your tickets, RSVP to the shows. Come on out, come hang out with me. It's, uh, it's always a really fun time. Uh, to, to meet people that want to get weird and esoteric and talk about the deeper, uh, deeper issues, deeper ideas. Uh, always fun to do that. And uh, while you're on my website, you can check out all of my past stand-up comedy albums. And you can become a patron over at patreon.com slash krishmohanhaha to uh, help support uh, and be a people sponsor of all of the content that I put out on a regular basis and to increase the quality and quantity of all of the uh, the videos and podcasts that I put out, uh, but uh, if you can't, that's okay. All of my stuff is constantly available for free. Anyway, uh, uh, by donating, it would just be an additional token of appreciation to kind of show solidarity and support. Uh, but uh, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Thank you guys so much for uh, for for supporting my work, my endeavors, and my projects. And uh, hopefully we'll see you on, on the next one. See you on the road, guys. Take it easy.